What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Okay, man. So I'm gonna I'm wrapping this up with the viewership, the coverage of this Vasil Lomachenko Linares fight, uh, with the the numbers with the viewership numbers. Now it is an absolutely monstrous drop in between the fight that he had with Guillermo Rigondeaux and the one he did with Vasil Lomachenko. It's a drop of over 700,000 viewers on average for this fight. And I say this, and this is not, I mean, it's not a good thing for boxing because Vasil Lomachenko really, really is an excellent fighter. And he really does deserve to get a lot of credit and to have more people be able to appreciate what he does in the ring. And it's just not getting there. Now, let me go through the article. I'll go through the articles and the numbers and all that stuff. And, and I'll show you, you know, what it is. But, man, this is just something where, you know, he did – he just didn't do very. It just did not do very well at all. There's no way. There's no way around it. This is ESPN, man. This is not HBO, and you had more actual viewers, more people watch Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz on Showtime than watch Vasil Lomachenko fight on ESPN, and the the number of people that were able to watch is massively, massively higher. So. Um, but before I do that, I'm definitely going to do a live stream before uh, before too long. And I would hope that you would attend. The best way to know that when it's going to happen is to be is to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And that way you can be notified of the of when the live streams occur. Also, thank you very much. As I always like to th- thank the people that that have that have donated on on Super Chat during the live streams. Also to Venmo and the Patreon the Patreon patrons. Thank you very, very much because what you do helps, uh, helps us, uh, supply equipment and def- different things to help young athletes who want to either get to college or we just want to keep out of the streets and, you know, give them something to do, uh, where they can, you know, grow to be constructive members of society and you donating and, and, uh, supporting the channel, even by watching the ads and the, you know, and watching the videos is very, very, much support uh, appreciated. Thank you very much. Now, this is not something I'm going to say before I get into this. This is not something that I'm happy with. This is not a this is not a good thing that 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 Vasil Lomachenko cannot does not do very good ratings. And honestly, he never really has done good ratings. The one time that it looked like man, that was a great performance, um, viewership performance was against Guillermo Rigondeaux. And there's a major difference between how the gear who there's a major difference between who promoted the Guillermo Rigondeau Lomachenko fight and who promoted the Lomachenko Linares fight. And in my opinion, that's where the difference lies. Now, let me go through the numbers again. Um, and then I'll uh, and I'll comment on it. This is an article that came out uh, today by uh, Keith Idick out of the boxing scene out of boxing scene.com. Vasily Lomachenko, Hori Linares was a much more competitive, compelling fight than Lomachenko's domination of Guillermo Rigondeaux, but it didn't draw greater reviews. The Nielsen Media Research numbers released Tuesday reveals ESPN's two bout broadcast Saturday night, which features Lomachenko's 10th round technical knockout of Linares drew an average audience of 1.24 million viewers. This article says, actually says, um, it is missing a zero, but they mean 1 million, uh, 1.024 million uh, viewers. The peak viewership for Lomachenko Linares wasn't available as of Tuesday afternoon. Lomachenko's performance, a technical knockout of previously unbeaten Guillermo Rigondeaux on December 9th in the theater in Madison Square Garden, drew a higher. Average rating for ESPN, 1.730, 1. 1.7, 1,730,000. Top ranks doubleheader last night at 8 p.m., uh, right in the middle of prime time on the East Coast, but earlier than usual for boxing broadcasts. It began with welterweight 
prospect Carlos Adams, 10 round unanimous uh, victory over Barrera. Um, and that's it. I'm not even going to go through the rest of this article because there's nothing else to say about it. Now, of course, Keith Eidick used that this started a little earlier than usual. Personally, I think that that is an advantage because this because this started dead in the middle of prime time. This fight started roughly around eight o'clock, nine o'clock. This is this is a good time to watch this fight, but it is just even if you say that's a little early, a dry, This is still better than his fight. This is still better than he did with Miguel Mariaga, which started later. I believe that Miguel Mariaga averaged somewhere for Lomachenko was somewhere around eight hundred thousand, something like that. And that had started started had started a little bit later. This is pretty consistent with what Lomachenko did, and this is a this is a fight that was promoted by both Top Rank and Golden Boy, right? For the guy that is supposed to be that they're that they're and ESPN talks about as being the number the best fighter in the world. These ratings are not very good at all. This did look this just to get this straight. They're when they start mincing words here, right? In this article where they say, while um, lower than Lomachenko's last fight, the Lomachenko Naris was higher than all but one of top ranks first five ESPN offerings in 2018. Now that is um, a nice spin, but it's not as high as two fights that have taken place on subscription networks. Gennady Golovkin versus Vanis Martirosin averaged 1.2 million. Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz averaged 1.1 million. And that was on Showtime and HBO. Not ESPN, not something where you already have access, you already have access to the it, you don't have to pay an extra fee in the United States to see it, to see ESPN. You actually have to subscribe to Showtime and HBO to get those fights. So here's my thing. And this is not a knock on Vasil Lomachenko. This is knock on the promotion. This is the knock on the promoters. You know, the guys that say that people need promoters to get bigger names. Deontay Wilder doesn't even doesn't have a promoter and his numbers were better. If you look at the average and I won't go through the math, if you look at the fact that you have guys like Errol Spence Jr. who are doing close to 700,000 with no promoter on Showtime. It's just that the fans want to see him. And sometimes I believe that you need to give the fans what the fans actually want to see instead of trying to tell people who Fans should want to see. If. Gear, why, so Guillermo Rigondeaux, Vasil Lomachenko outperformed this by over 700,000 on average. Over 700,000 on average. 706,000. An average of 706,000 more people were interested in watching Vasil Lomachenko against Guillermo Rigondeau. Why would that be? What would the cause for that be? Clearly, it's because people wanted to see Guillermo Rigondeau fight. It wasn't just Lomachenko. It was Lomachenko and Rigondeau. And the, if, you, if you guys recall how the fight came into ex, came to be made, it was like pulling teeth. To get uh to get Bob Arum to take that fight, to make that fight against Guillermo Rigondeaux. He called it a crap fight. You had a bunch of people on the internet, you know, really making videos on a daily basis trying to push to get that fight made. Now, personally, I know this personally because I did 15, 20 videos on it, trying to continue to keep the the, the name of that fight out there before the fight. Of articles about Vasil Lomachenko says he doesn't really want the fight because the fight because he doesn't think he gets anything out of it. 
you know, fights about, you know, Guillermo Rigondeau, what he did on the Instagram and how he you know, on Instagram and on Twitter and how he was pushing for the fight. And I wasn't the only channel or several other many other channels doing that, trying to push and create a scenario where the fight could get made. And eventually the fight got made. But do you know what all those videos are? Those all those videos are promotion. They're all communicating to fight fans that there's a fight out there that could be interesting. And if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the groundswell of support for that fight, number one, it wouldn't have happened. And number two, it definitely wouldn't have done the ratings that it did. Seven hundred thousand more for Guillermo Rigondeau than for Jorge Linares. They're both Spanish speak. They're both Spanish speaking fighters. One of them and actually one of them was a better fight on paper then the, the second, Lenars was a better fight on paper than the first. And if the Guillermo Rigondeau fight was going to give, it should have propelled Vasil Lomachenko to higher, to greater heights, right? But instead, it's a drop off of 700,000. And you know what the funny thing I find is? That not only that, Bob Aram probably made a lot more money on the fight because Bob Aram had to pay uh, Jorge Lenares a million dollars. Jorge Linares made $600,000 more to bring in 700,000 less people on average than Guillermo Rigondeau did. I just find it, I find that funny from the standpoint of, from Bob Aram. But as far as like what fights should be made, that's what's going to, that's why I'm saying, that is what's going to push boxing over the edge. The thing, the only reasonable the only reasonable explanation for why Guillermo Rigondeau versus Vasil Lomachenko would not quite do, would do 70% better, 70% better than than Lomachenko versus Linares. 70% is because that's what fans wanted to see. That's what the fights that fans were pushing for and not fans that promoters are trying to make because it fits along the 8 10 fight plan that the promoter has and it immediately is given gratification to fans and what fans who are ultimately the people that pay for the fights they giving them what they want Lomachenko can be that type of star but it's not going to become and I mean by that type of car excuse me because I didn't lead into what that is Lomachenko is a absolute top notch fighter without a doubt he proved that he proved that against Linares he proved it to me he proved it I'd already known looking at him naked eye test that that was the case but he showed me some things in that fight that I had not seen him seen him do which grew my respect for him the main thing was he got off the ground after having gotten hurt because he was hurt I watched that thing several times. That was straight right down the pike hurt him. That straight right, yep, that was, excuse me. Yep, that straight right hand, which is the nemesis of, which is the nemesis nemesis of Southpaws, landed flush on the nose and knocked him down. I thought uh, originally he was standing square, but I I looked at it again and no, he wasn't. His legs buckled, his legs buckled and he dropped. But then he got up. He cleared his head. He was. He knew what to do. He st- he got up. L- L- Lenares did not jump on him like he probably should have. He cleared his hair, head. He did. He fought a defensive round, and then got back in there and fought again. That was kudos to him for that. That shows to me that I, that showed me much more than any other fight that I've seen him in. With the exception, I guess, maybe the end of the uh, Orlando Salido fight, because although he lost that Orlando Salido fight, he did pick up the pressure pressure and show that he was willing to trade and do what he needed to do to try to win that fight. He actually showed a good amount of heart in the, um, in that, uh, Orlando Salido fight. And he showed it again in this fight, but just calling him the number one pound for pound fighter in the world and having, uh, you know, Tim Bradley, uh, say he's the greatest fighter, you know, living and how this, that, and the other thing, that's obviously not that's obviously not working because you guys they've been doing that for five they've been doing that for five or six fights now and it's not in his and he's not any more popular now than he was when that started 
So uh, there is no, unless you can get Vasil Lomachenko in there with people that, with people that, uh, with fighters that people want to see, he'll continue, he'll continue to stagnate. And that one up, uptick that you saw with Guillermo Rigondeaux proved that. If he's matched with somebody that people want to see, then people will get, then everybody will tune in to see his fight. Some people are going to tune in to watch him lose, right? There's a whole bunch of people that watch Lomachenko versus uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux hoping he was going to lose, right? And there's another thing about it. When you try to sell somebody as being, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> undefeatable, and put them in some, and put them in fights where nobody's wondering what the outcome's going to be. You know, people might just even the hardest, most hardcore boxing fan might turn around and say, "Well, I'll catch it tomorrow morning." You know, or I, I got this ESPN app. I might do it on replay or something. But I'm, I'm really not going to do it. I'm not going to watch it today. So, and you can also you can see that also in the in the metered marketing ratings for the fight, the ones that have to do specifically with the advertising. Right. The advertiser, I think the metered rating, the Nelson's uh, market meter rating for this fight was a, a 1.0. And Guillermo, and Vasil Lomachenko versus Guillermo Rigondeaux was a 1.5. So it was like a 33 percent. Uh, it was a 33 percent drop off in the uh, in the meter rating. But it was a God dog, man, 700,000. 700,000 drop off viewer average viewer drop off for Lomachenko from to Lo, from Lomachenko uh rigging down to Lomachenko Linares and there's no way that you can you can't polish that turd I'm sorry man I saw reports coming out before where they're saying these big ratings right when they let those media ratings out they're like big ratings and I did it. That's what I'm saying. I made this video twice because originally I did this video looking at the meter rating and just saying, okay, it dropped from 1.3, I mean 1.5 to 1.0, which is 0.5. That's a third. But then when you do the numbers, when you actually look at the number of viewers that it dropped off, man, it's closer to 40%. <laughs> it's closer to it's it's closer to 40%. That is absolutely absolutely crazy absolutely crazy oh excuse me it's more than 40 percent like i say yeah i will always tell cats 1.7 calculator right let's see what 50 percent of that 1.50 of 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 a million is 500 so 700 yeah it's 50 percent it dropped by almost 50 percent between 45 and 50 percent drop in viewership that is that's gigantic man that's gigantic so hopefully he'll make the mikey garcia fight see this now gives leverage to mikey garcia if espn and these guys want to make a star lomachenko you're not going to do it with beltran beltran's gonna gonna you're gonna get the same ratings again with beltran you're gonna unless you know espn is just not interested in ratings you know what i mean Unless they're just not interested in having, you know, having uh, their advertisers look at the ratings that come along with fights and saying, wow, okay, Lomachenko just dropped by a third, you know, unless they're not interested in that. But if he get if he gets on there, if they can make a deal and get Mikey Garcia on there, hey, man, that could work. But then again, we know that they're also moving over to that ESPN Plus app. So with the ESPN Plus app, of course, the numbers are going to drop down even more. But, hey, we got to pay an extra five bucks a month for that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an additional revenue producing thing. So maybe that will get that going. You know, we'll make can have them continue to be happy with Lomachenko. But, you know, as far as whether or not this cat, whether Lomachenko is ever going to really be a star star, whether or not he's going to be something, you know, on the level of, you know, a Canelo Alvarez or and Anthony Joshua or Floyd Mayweather or, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, somebody like that. And at this point, if he's even going to get to the level of Deontay Wilder, right. <laughs> or Gennady Golovkin. Hey man, it's, it's not looking, it's not looking like it unless, unless they put him in tough against fights in fights that, that boxing fans are asking for. And with that, I'm out. Peace.